This is Detective Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a thriller action adventure film called The Revenant, which is based on a true story. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. If there's one thing that skilled hunter and tracker Hugh Glass encourages his son to do, it's to not give up, to keep fighting. It isn't long before Glass' happy family home is set ablaze by American colonizers, and his wife dies in his arms. Glass and his son Hawk are hunting in the forest for elk. His shot too across the frontier and is heard by John Fitzgerald, who doesn't seem too pleased by the sound. He approaches a camp with people preparing the pelts from their hunt. Fitzgerald informs Captain Andrew Henry about his concerns regarding Glass gunfire making too much noise and attracting unwanted attention. He wants them to leave as soon as possible. All is going well until an injured man approaches the camp and collapses. The camp is ambushed by the Native American tribe, the Ri. Hearing the attack, Glass and Hawk rush back over to camp. The tribe overwhelms the camp of hunters, but there are still many casualties on both sides. During the attack, Glass orders everyone to leave the pelts and get to the boat, while Fitzgerald's instruction is for everyone to grab as many pelts as they can. Glass, Hawk, Fitzgerald, Captain Andrew, and a handful of survivors barely manage to escape to the boats. After the attack, the tribe's chieftain reveals that their goal was to steal the hunter's animal pelts and sell them off to the French for profit. Back at the boat of survivors, everyone's on edge while recovering from the attack. Fitzgerald argues with Captain Andrew that they should continue on the boat back to the fort, but they ultimately decide to follow Glass's idea of trekking back on foot. Though Fitzgerald disapproves of this, Captain Andrew reasons that Glass knows the land the best and that he'll get them back safely. As they trek to the fort, Fitzgerald continues to disapprove of the idea, but no one's listening. The salvaged pelts become too cumbersome for them to carry, so they decide to leave them behind and come back for them once they've reached the fort. Again, Fitzgerald argues that the pelts will be long gone by the time they retrieve them, and he complains that he'll lose his wage without them. Then, he starts blaming Glass and his son for the attack. He antagonizes the both of them, calling Hawk a half-breed and his mother a savage. And while the others argue that the Pawnees are against the Rees, too, he counters that a savage is still a savage. Fitzgerald roughly questions their loyalty given Hawk's heritage and how Glass had killed an American lieutenant in the past. Hawk nearly attacks him in anger, but Glass keeps his son under control before continuing to work on his rifle, while Fitzgerald keeps provoking them. Finally, Captain Andrew stops Fitzgerald from his tirade so they can go on with their journey. Meanwhile, Glass scolds Hawk and Pawnee, reminding him of his instruction to be invisible. But when Hawk tries to argue about them hearing him, Glass angrily interrupts, shouting that they don't listen to his words. They just see the color of his face. It is soon revealed that Hawk has burn scars on his face from when their home was being burned down. Around dusk, the survivors abandon the boat to float downriver, but some of the men decide to stay with the boat. The survivors make camp that night, and Glass leaves the scout ahead. The next morning comes, and the Re discover the boat and kill the men aboard as they're still hunting down the remaining survivors. Back with the survivors, they are making their way through the forest with Glass in the lead. Captain Andrew asks Glass about his past, whether what Fitzgerald said was true, but Glass doesn't give an answer. The survivors stop to take a break and Glass leaves to go hunting. He stumbles into two bear cubs, and a grizzly bear lunges from behind him. In a tragic turn of events, he is brutally mauled by the bear, leaving him with major injuries. His only reprieve is when the bear leaves to check on her cubs, so Glass uses the opportunity to crawl to his gun. He shoots the bear, but it isn't enough to take it down as it comes back to maul Glass once again. 
Its vicious onslaught repeats itself. But finally, Glass manages to stab the bear to death. They both fall off a small cliff, with the dead bear on top of a dying glass. The survivors find him, and they immediately attempt to treat his wounds. Captain Andrew inspects his injuries, and he notes that they're quite severe. Fitzgerald suggests to the rest of the men that Glass should just be euthanized to end his suffering, while Glass passes out from his injuries. Meanwhile, the tribe along with their chieftain deliver the stolen pelts to a French camp and trade them for horses. But the French leader, Toussaint, is trying to go back on what they agreed on, so the chieftain questions his honor. But he still manages to convince Toussaint to trade when he admits that his daughter, Pawaka, has been kidnapped, so they need the horses to rescue her. The survivors try continuing their journey while carrying glass on a stretcher, but this significantly slows them down. With very little strength and options remaining, Captain Andrew decides to euthanize glass but doesn't follow through. Instead, he asks for three men to stay with glass and continue their journey back. A young hunter named Jim Bridger. Hawk and Fitzgerald volunteer, but Fitzgerald is only doing so under the condition that he'd be paid for staying. Later that day, Hawk urges his father to keep fighting, taking Glass back to the time his family was attacked by the colonizers. His wife was shot dead and his son was left with burn scars on his face. At this point, Glass is even hallucinating that his wife is floating above him. The next morning, Fitzgerald digs a shallow grave, and he begs Glass to just give him permission to euthanize him so he can save his son from the threat of the Ree. Glass agrees after some convincing, but when Fitzgerald is beginning to suffocate him, Hawk attacks the man and screams to Bridger for help. But since Bridger's far down the creek, he doesn't hear the commotion, and Hawk is left to take care of Fitzgerald by himself. To stop the boy from alerting unwanted attention, Fitzgerald murders him and hides his body. And the furious Glass can't even scream for help. Later, Bridger returns and asks where Hawk has gone. But Fitzgerald lies, saying he doesn't know. Glass still can't speak, so all his attempts to warn Bridger are futile. Fitzgerald lies again about the Ree being close by, so he manages to convince him to leave Glass and Hawk behind. Fitzgerald drags Glass into a shallow grave to Bridger's dismay. And feeling sorry for the man, Bridger leaves Glass a canteen of water before departing. Meanwhile, the rest of the survivors struggle to find a path back home, and they argue over which direction they should go. After being left for dead, Glass crawls out of his grave and looks for his son. When he discovers his son's dead body, the agonizing realization that he's lost the last of his family dawns on him. And Glass is both shocked and devastated by his loss. Sometime later, Bridger confronts Fitzgerald about the inconsistencies in his story and threatens him at gunpoint to tell the truth. Fitzgerald admits he lied about the Re, and before Bridger can can react, Fitzgerald pins him down and turns the gun on him. Luckily, the gun doesn't fire when he pulls the trigger as Bridger had forgotten to load the gun properly. Fitzgerald spares his life, and the two continue on their journey. After Glass bids his final goodbye to his son, he begins scavenging for supplies. He uses Bridger's canteen to collect some water, then ignites some gunpowder in his neck to cauterize the wound. As for the Re, they soon find Glass's shallow grave along with Hawk's body. Meanwhile, the survivors are making their way up a snowy mountain with Bridger and Fitzgerald following suit. Fitzgerald and Bridger stumble upon the aftermath of an attacked Native American camp. Bridger finds a survivor and gives her food, while Fitzgerald looks for some horses for them to use. Later that night, they set up camp. Bridger questions whether they did the right thing, but Fitzgerald shrugs him off. Fitzgerald begins to tell a story of his father finding God while surviving starvation in the wilderness. It turns out that God was a squirrel that his father shot and ate to survive. The next morning, Glass dreams about seeing Fitzgerald, him pointing a gun at the lieutenant who attacked his home and his dead son in the water. 
That night, Glass encounters a lone Native American who manages to scare off the wolves from some bison carcass. The stranger begins eating the carcass and Glass approaches, begging for food. The stranger throws him a piece of meat and Glass eats it. The next morning, the stranger inspects Glass's wound, which wakes him up. The stranger asks Glass what happened to him, so he explains everything. He sympathizes with Glass, saying his family was killed too, and offers him a ride south. After a day of travel, the stranger notices Glass's wounds are starting to get infected and tells him that he'll die if he leaves them untreated. As for Fitzgerald and Bridger, they finally make it to the fort. He warns Bridger against telling the truth, seeing as they will both be hanged for murder if they're found out. They both meet with Captain Andrew and lie about Glass and Hawk, saying that they tried their best but were under the threat of the Re. Because of that, they had no choice but to leave them behind. Believing their story, Captain Andrew pays them both for their efforts, but Bridger declines the reward as the guilt still keeping a tight hold on him. In the middle of Glass's journey, he passes out, his wounds finally taking a toll on him. The stranger makes him a shelter from the snowstorm and begins treating his wounds. In Glass's dream, he finds his son inside the ruins of a church. They embrace, but it's revealed that it isn't Hawk who he's holding. Glass is just embracing a tree. The next morning, Glass comes out of the shelter and finds the stranger dead and hanged up a tree by the French who camp nearby. Meanwhile, the Rees chieftain is informed of the location of the same camp and they begin to move out. It turns out that the French were also the ones who have kidnapped Pauka, the chieftain's daughter, and Toussaint calls his men to bring her to him while he makes a crude joke about how the horses weren't for free. Glass sneaks his way to the camp to steal a horse, and there he spots Toussaint forcing himself on Pawaka. Glass then saves her, releases the men's horses, and shoots one of the men. With that, he takes off on horseback, leaving his canteen behind. Pawaka immediately escapes as well. Back at the fort, Fitzgerald is in a bar, and the people are celebrating the new year. He talks to Captain Andrew about their plan of retrieving the pelts and his payment, but the captain says that he can't get paid until they get reinforcements. This upsets Fitzgerald and he demands to be paid, but the captain counters that Fitzgerald had spent more money on the expedition than what he is owed by the company. Drunk and angry, Fitzgerald stumbles out of the bar and collapses into the snow. Back to glass, he's set up camp and now he's having another dream of his wife floating above him. His dream is interrupted as the Ree suddenly attacks him. He manages to get on his horse while the Ree are in pursuit. They shoot Glass's horse with an arrow and the both of them fall off the cliff. Fortunately, a pine tree manages to break Glass's fall, but as he recovers from it, he discovers that his horse didn't survive. With threat of freezing to death looming over him, he starts gutting the horse to use it as shelter from the incoming snowstorm. The next morning, Glass survives the cold weather and continues his journey on foot. That night, Glass sets up camp and on a wall of ice. He writes, Fitzgerald killed my son. Meanwhile at the fort, they discover a surviving Frenchman and he tells them about a man who stole their horses. He shows off Glass's canteen, which Bridger recognizes immediately. This gives them the hope that Hawk is still out there. So Captain Andrew immediately mobilizes a rescue party with Bridger coming along. Fitzgerald stays behind while staring at the canteen, worried about the possibility of Glass's survival. Night comes, and to their surprise, they find Glass out in the woods and rescue him. The truth is out now, and knowing that Fitzgerald is a liar, the furious Captain Andrew rides ahead back to the fort to confront him. Unfortunately, Fitzgerald has already left the fort to enlist in the army, and he took all the money in the company's safe. With the main culprit gone, Captain Andrew confronts Bridger and arrests him for treason. But later on, Glass tells him that Bridger's innocent before convincing Captain Andrew to let him come with him to hunt Fitzgerald down despite his injuries. While they're tracking him down, the group makes camp, and Captain Andrew confesses how much he misses his wife back home. He asks about Glass killing a lieutenant again. 
And this time, Glass finally answers him, reasoning that he had to do it to protect his son. The next day, Glass and Captain Andrew split up to look for tracks. While Glass discovers an abandoned campfire, Captain Andrew is ambushed by Fitzgerald at gunpoint. Captain Andrew pulls out his pistol, and from there, shots are fired. Glass hears the gunshots, so he makes his way back to the source. Tragically, he discovers a dead Captain Andrew, whose head was scalped by the Re. Later, Glass is on horseback with Captain Andrew's horse, carrying his body from behind. Fitzgerald already has his sights set on Glass from up a hill, and he takes his shot, which leads to Glass falling off his horse. He walks over to Glass and begins to inspect his body, but Glass had tricked him by switching places with Captain Andrew's body, which was propped up on horseback by the branch he collected earlier. Before Fitzgerald can react, Glass shoots him in the shoulder, spurring him to run away with Glass in pursuit. Glass loses him in the forest with Fitzgerald hiding behind a nearby tree. Fitzgerald fires at Glass, and he fires back, the both of them missing their shots. They give chase until both of them end up next to a river. Now that Fitzgerald may very well be looking his death in the eye, he tries to reason with Glass, saying that he had killed his son and Lee him there for the better, but Glass isn't hearing him out. Instead, Glass attacks Fitzgerald with a tomahawk cutting a few of his fingers. They keep fighting in the snow, stabbing, biting, and wrestling, and all their fighting culminates to Glass gravely stabbing Fitzgerald in the stomach. Before Glass can finish him off, the Re and the Chieftain arrive. Instead of killing Fitzgerald himself, he gives him off to the Re, with the Chieftain scalping Fitzgerald's head and killing him. The Re spares Glass's life, since he was the one who saved the Chieftain's daughter. In his triumph and exhaustion, Glass walks up a hill to see an image of his wife. She smiles at him and walks away, leaving Hugh Glass in tears. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.